let's admit it, as professional wrestling fans, especially if we've been watching for years and years, there's not a lot that surprises us about the business or that happens in the business anymore. It just isn't. We've gotten kind of jaded, cynical, some of us certainly more than others, and I'm certainly on the larger end of that spectrum. But, again, when you think about wrestling, when you think about the things that can happen, the things that will happen, or should happen, or do happen, nothing really surprises you when it does or does not happen. So you can imagine my total lack of surprise when Vince McMahon and whoever the hell else was behind this brainchild trotted out this raw underground concept that it wasn't going to last very long. Did that surprise any of you? Did anybody really think that this thing had legs for six months or a year? No, I think actually most people, most rational fans, assumed that in a couple of months Vince would lose interest in this and he would stop doing it, as he so often does with so many things, which is actually a really frustrating element of dealing with Vince McMahon in his advancing years. And it's what happened. Apparently, after just over two months of doing the stupid concept, Vince is dropping Raw Underground. And, like I said, first and foremost, imagine my lack of complete and total surprise here. Most of you also are not surprised whatsoever. This thing was doomed to fail from the beginning. This is Vince or somebody around Vince getting a dumbass idea because they were panicking because their ratings for Raw continue to go down and they can't get right and they can't figure it out and they can't right the ship. They can't fix it. So instead of looking at the fundamentals of what's going on, what's wrong, and really trying to address those fundamentals and fixing those and starting yourself on that upward trajectory for the long term, as always, Vince is going to do... What Vince does now, as an incredibly older, more senile, more out-of-touch businessman, CEO, he's just going to go with the thing that's got his interest at the moment, and he's going to yell at the clouds about how great it is and how much everything else sucks, and as soon as he loses his interest or he forgets about it, it's all over. And these are the types of things that you see happen all the time. And... When you look at Raw Underground, even from the very first installment, like you had the girls that were supposed to be like go-go dancers, but there really wasn't even any sex appeal to them, but Kevin Dunn and the production team would keep cutting to them, but then the next week they're not there. So you've already stopped doing one of the things that you had thrown out there the first week. Uh, and just each week you would see it, or you would see the clips, you would see the highlights, or if you watched the show, you would just see that there was no point to any of this. Unless you're saying it was to introduce that Dabo dude. Like, did you really need to construct a whole raw underground concept for this? Like, to the point, we talk about really bad storylines and really bad ideas. Somebody pointed out to me on Twitter, and rightfully so, that the Brawl for All, easily one of the worst, most idiotic concepts this company ever did, lasted longer than Raw Underground. And you talk about the Brawl for All, which ruined careers, ended careers, effectively one way or another. Raw Underground wasn't doing that. It was a fake work shoot fight style. But it was so frenetic and so like, it's weird because it was just very random it seemed like everything that they did and you didn't know half of the people that were there and then the other half of the people that you actually did know they were there unless it was somebody like the Hurt Business or Braun you felt like well they don't have any business here because I don't give a crap about them so why are you wasting my time with just putting them in a different segment of Raw where I'm still not going to give a crap about them so they were doing that but all of a sudden this is supposed to be Raw and it's supposed to have an underground feel but you got all the incessant unnecessary camera cuts that makes it feel anything other than Raw or underground. It's like again like so many things with Vince and the WWE talking out of his ass or at least out of both sides of his mouth when it comes to the product and the presentation and it's ridiculous. And you know this is an even bigger example of somebody like Vince trying to sit there and take something from the MMA world take something where somebody else has been successful and trying to put his own spin on it and do his own thing. 
and he doesn't get it and he doesn't understand it and he doesn't know it and he won't understand it. He won't get it. He won't know it. And yet and still he continues to persist. But then immediately wonders why it's not working. And instead of looking at it as saying, hey, you know, maybe I could take this concept and make it work, but I've got to do some things to actually make it work. Instead, the clown just sits there and gives up on it just like that. And, you know, let me be clear. Too often, especially in the internet age, especially in the social media age, everybody's so quick to pounce on anybody for their mistakes, their shortcomings, their faults. Like, it's kind of sickening and counterproductive and everything else. Mistakes are how we learn. Mistakes are how we get out of our comfort zone. It forces us to improve. It forces us to get better. You know, sometimes certain mistakes, you know, are bigger and more serious mistakes than others. But something like this, like a raw underground concept, you try it and you fail, that, so, that can be okay. And it shouldn't necessarily be discouraged because at least A, you tried something, and B, it gives you an opportunity to learn from it and grow from it, and potentially you could take something from it and incorporate it elsewhere. But the real frustration about it is, is like with so many things involving Vince McMahon and his product today, is that that's not going to happen. There's not going to be any looking back and saying, hey, what could I take from here that maybe didn't work here, but it could work elsewhere? What am I going to do here? What am I going to learn from this? How could I maybe revamp this? How could I incorporate it differently? He's not going to do any of that. It's just literally like so many things, especially on Raw, just one ginormous ass waste of time. Ginormous ass waste of time. And all you ended up doing was taking a couple of months worth of Raw, sprinkling in this crap that had no long-term future or plan. You wasted that valuable, precious cable prime time airtime that you have each week on Monday nights for something that was going to fail and you won't learn anything from it. You won't sit there and incorporate anything from it into the other products. You won't do any of that. It was just a waste of time. And it just comes across like the feeling of a kind of desperate, pathetic man at this point. Like for those that are going to say, you know, well, Vince is this and Vince is that in terms of the good elements. Yeah, but a lot of that crap's in the past. You're going to point to, well, WWE had record prop, going to have record profits potentially this year. Yeah, but there are so many other cost-cutting things that were done and other things like that doesn't automatically mean long-term growth and health are on the horizon. Like Blockbuster, we all know that story. They didn't even think Netflix was competition, wasn't even on their radar. In 2008, less than two years later, they filed bankruptcy. You know, Blockbuster used to make a profit and they are for all intents and purposes gone, dead, RIP. Like, are you going to focus on the legacy of the past or are you going to focus on the here and now and the reality and the future? Like, it's just so clearly obvious that it's only going to get worse for this company and it's only going to get worse with Raw as long as Vince McMahon is continuing to oversee the creative and he is in charge of everything. You have now reached that point in time where Vince McMahon has become the Al Davis of WWE. And for some of you that might be Raiders fans, this might irritate you a little bit, but it might also actually resonate with you and totally make sense what I'm going to say. Like Al Davis in the NFL as an owner was a pioneer. He was a maverick. He was a trailblazer. You know, so many things that he did were innovative from the style of football to, you know, being the first one to ever hire a black head coach in the modern NFL when he did it with Art Shell in 89. Like, you go on and on. Lots of younger coaches got their first opportunities with varying degrees of success, whether it's Mike Shanahan or that's John Gruden or later on Lane Kiffin. But, you know, you're also talking about a guy, talk about the greatness of the Raiders and kind of like that long period of sustained excellence that that Raiders franchise had really from the mid-60s all the way through to the early 1980s. And even then they still weren't bad. But once you got to that kind of run under Gruden in 2000-ish to 2002, after that, they fell off a cliff, and for most of the last decade of Al Davis's life, they were really, really bad, and he brought that Raiders franchise damn near to the grave with him. That's how bad it had gotten. And that's not to sit there and say that you forget about the legacy of Al Davis or you forget 
about all the great things that he did. No, 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 no. Those stand the test of time. Those are timeless things for sure. But it also doesn't change the reality that for the good portion of the last eight or nine years of his life, the single biggest enemy to the, at the time, Oakland Raiders success was Al Davis. He was out of touch. He had no patience. He was firing coaches and hiring coaches left and right. He was giving away first round picks for guys like Richard Seymour and Carson Palmer. Like those are the, uh, Randy Moss, like those are the types of decisions that a guy that has lost his grip on reality and is no longer at his most effective does. And what you saw out of Al Davis now reminds me very much of what I've seen out of Vince McMahon in particular the past five years. And I'm here to tell you, it's not going to get any better. So I'm absolutely not surprised that Raw Underground is done after two months. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Because this is the phase of life that Vince is in. He knows the clock is counting down. So as a result, he's not going to have patience. He's not going to have a fine eye for the more important details. He's not going to care about things truly working. He's just going to come up with an idea or have somebody present him with an idea, throw it out there, hope to God it sticks against the wall, and if he doesn't, he'll very quickly move the hell on. And that's just not successful. And that's not a formula for success. And you know, it's why five years ago, Raw still used to do about 4 million viewers, and now you're talking about 1.6, 1.7 million viewers. Like you can blame cord cutting. You can blame so many other things. You can blame whatever. But that's a over 50% viewership drop in just five years. That ain't all of that. A lot of that is because of this type of shit that Vince McMahon does. This type of stuff here is the perfect embodiment of why this company is only going to continue to head down and down and down a dark and rough path until Vince is either gone, like RIP gone, or he is removed from the picture. Because you're never going to be successful doing this stuff. So Raw Underground, yet again, a perfect embodiment of what I've talked about really since the beginning of doing these wrestling videos going all the way back to 2010, 2011. It's just one gigantic waste of time that nobody can get invested in anything and everybody asks at the end, what the hell was the point of that?